Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 7 of Kerbal Wars, and we start, well, we start in the dark, so I am going to warp into the day, but yeah, this is uh, basically carrying on from the last episode, um, well, if you don't remember from the last episode, we've captured a, a rebel pilot, and we need to bring him in, so that's what this is, this is, um, my prison carrier, really, my carrier, it's more of a prison vessel, prison transport, basically a space prison bus is what it is. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to, to make, a, make a perfect reusable space plane one, so I'm just launching on a rocket, and it's a bit hashed together, but it does the job, and it has all the features it needs, so yeah. Um, it's a fairly standard launch, so I'm going to do my usual thing of just skipping through it, although I did like the uh, stage separation of the boosters. I do like using these SLS type um, launch vehicles, the Space Launch System, if you don't know, which is the next American rocket, which might not even really be necessary, but I think will be cool. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, dropping them away looked quite nice, so I thought I'd leave that in. I like some some finesse in, this, uh, in these uh, videos. Um, and then in space we'll separate, and you can see uh, my, my spacecraft briefly there, uh, there was the prison cells and the pod, and well, the 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 like the transfer stage is detachable, and it is just made to re-enter. So it's not like a cool reusable spacecraft, which I should really be designing for this uh, for these episodes, uh, for these videos. But I will at some point. But this is just kind of my first attempt, and I like the idea. So I'll probably design something more um, reusable. Uh, sort of thing in the future that doesn't like separate its stage and re-enter so it's more than one use basically so it'll dock to some sort of station I guess although I don't have a station yet dun 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 which might happen this episode a bit um but yeah it's just a matter of pushing ourselves into orbit um this obviously has a pretty ridiculous thr thrust weight ratio when it's empty of fuel so uh I need very little throttle on my uh, big old space launch system style si style vehicle um but yeah, anyway, it's just a matter of planning the maneuver, which obviously takes me a while, because I, I always seem to take a while to plan maneuvers, especially Minmus, it's a little inclined. So yeah, anyway, I've skipped ahead. Uh, but I'm using, uh, you probably can't see because it's so dark, but I, I'm using LVT-45s for my engines, which probably is a pretty stupid choice. Um, it used to be a better choice, but they've actually nerfed their uh, ISP a little bit, so um, it was a very poor choice using LVT-45s. They only have about 100, 320... Um, ISP in space, so they're not particularly fuel efficient, um, but their thrust to weight ratio is pretty good, but still, yeah, it wasn't a brilliant choice, but we're only going to min and back, so it uh, shouldn't be too bad, but anyway, skipping through the burn, um, we get ourselves our, well, I actually overburn a bit there, but I can bring it in with RCS because I brought a lot of RCS because, well, this is a, we'll have to do lots of complicated dockings, well, maybe like two, um, but it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Um, which is very true in space travel. Um, and it looks like I have overburned a little bit, or burned, taken too long to do my burn, because I'm actually off my planned path. So uh, I'll just, um, well, retrograde burning would be rather foolish, but yeah, I just basically sort it out until I've got myself my nice encounter, as you can see here, uh, bring myself down close to Minmus, the uh, beautiful little mint in the uh, in orbit of Kerbin. I do very much like Minmus. I know I say that pretty much every time I do anything at Minmus, but I goddamn love Minmus. Anyway, using the nice new warp to maneuver thing, which I still don't trust, I'm always too scared it's going to go past, because um, computers are liars and thieves. <laughs> when the machines rise up, it'll be the auto-warp feature in KSP that's the first to go. But yeah, you can see a little better here, the um, prison cells are actually, um, well, prisoner transport cells are actually those little lander cans, and they're rotated in such a way that the doors aren't actually accessible to Kerbals, so they can only get in and out by transferring. So it is a secure system, and they do get a window, and I thought this was actually quite a nice design. I like this idea, and they looked more prison celly. Um, I wasn't, re I didn't really feel like using... Um, a hitchhiker storage container because it has a door and it's that that's for real people not prisoners um i know you have to treat prisoners of war very well but uh is there a geneva convention in the kerbal system well i i try to abide by rules because i'm better than my enemy um yeah i doubt the uh, rebels would treat us with such kindness although we're not really those pods are pretty small but you know hey i gave them a window um <laughs> anyway yeah skipping ahead again as uh, as per the, well, as happens a lot in these videos, um, it's just down by Minmus now, quickly bring ourselves in and then hopefully I get a closer approach with the, well, with the Lustrious, which is currently holding our prisoner, um, holding them captive, um, even though we don't have any weapons on board the Illustrious, so there's very little we could do, but we've, uh, well, the, the, the Kerbal, the officer on board, did, has his pistol and such, 
um, pointed at the pod just out the window, <laughs> just like drive by in space. Uh, I should write screenplays about space that are all just really dumb. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, look, which one's our ship? Yeah, the illustrious, the illustrious Corvette Mark I, our most battle-worthy ship yet. It did take on those two fighters quite well last episode, actually. It withstood a, de a couple of decent shots, even that epic curve shot, that was amazing. If you didn't see last episode, I did get a really great curve shot in, because I didn't set up the missiles properly on the enemy fighter, and it curved so well. It, like, it like curved around and hit the spacecraft. Yeah, I don't know, you have to see it. Um... And then maybe you could just watch it like 20 more times, just, you know, find my idea, <laughs> get all the views. Um, but anyway, we've got ourselves an encounter. Um, well, a close approach, I guess. We're not actually affected by uh, the Illustrious' huge gravity. Um, but yeah, here we are, moving in. And it is in the dark again. It seems like a lot of my maneuvers seem to just ha be in the dark, but that's just happenstance, I guess. But, uh, well, it's, it's, it's not too bad. You can see the important bits, which are the RCS jets firing and the Kerbals and things. And we are getting rather close to the illustrious now, and uh, yeah, but now it's just a matter of um, getting rid of this pod from the illustrious, because it only has one docking port, so um, I need to throw it away and hope that the guy doesn't... We've locked that door. Um, yeah, he's not pointing his pistol out the window, we, we locked the door. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, let's just uh, throw that out there, and I'm sure um, the pilot will be gracious enough to turn his spacecraft to allow me to dock to him more easily. Um, as you can see here, although this docking took me a surprisingly long time, I don't really know why. I couldn't quite pinpoint it. It's really hard docking with a small thing in a 3D space when you can only see, the, see it on a 2D screen, though, when you think about it. Because it looks like you've lined up, and then you're not, because there's another dimension. Um, but anyway, I do eventually get it. Uh, one of my slower dockings. Um, but anyway, let's uh, grab, the, uh, grab the, cr the war criminal known as... Well, we'll uh, find out his name, I guess. Um... But yeah, we'll just put him in his pod, transfer him in, and he won't be able to escape until we allow him to. Um, well, and then he won't escape. He'll be in a prison, and then, well, I guess we'll inform for us. Um, <laughs> I was transferring fuel there, not Kerbals. That's not what I'm interested in. Um, oh, the perfidious Bob Kerman, our, uh, our greatest nemesis. We'll uh, put him in one of these cells. He was flying the RHF, which actually took out Hermes. Um, actually, no, we took out Hermes. They damaged Hermes and stole the ship, and then we went and took it and tore it apart and destroyed our own ship and lost our humanity. No, we didn't lose our humanity or our kerbality. Yeah, we didn't lose our kerbality. That ship was that ship was rogue, and we have a much better one now. Odin is far better. Now, Lustrius is a great backup ship, and I have some plans for some uh, very different carriers without things on the front. Uh, without doors on the front, doors on the side, which was actually suggested me to me by a comment. Um, and when I do do it, I'll probably just mention that guy. I've forgotten his name, but if I can find the comment. Um, that's what prompted me to think about it. Um, but yeah, it has side sideways doors, so it's harder to get missiles down it sort of thing. Um, because I have some uh, some things planned, but we, uh, we'll talk about them later, I guess. Um, but anyway, we really need to be getting home. We'll leave Illustrious here for now. I think Illustrious might need a little bit of fuel, um, because it's a little low, actually. I, I, I didn't pack as much fuel as I thought, but it was designed in the days where liquid fuel and oxidizer were needed for nuclear engines, but uh, no more. Now, uh, they just need liquid fuel, but that does mean they require a lot more liquid fuel, and yeah, I didn't bring enough sort of thing. So yeah, this will probably just be a, um, a kind of home guard sort of thing. But anyway, yeah, after a little bit of planning my maneuver, which wasn't that much to prograde burn, I thought I'd just show you finishing it off. It's just a matter of um, burning until my uh, uh, my periapsis within the atmosphere, and I keep getting moon encounters, although that's going to happen if we're in the same system, I guess. Um, but yeah, I was a little worried about fuel when I realized how low the ISPs were on those um, LVT-45s, but it, it was fine, it worked out all right. Um, and then it's just a matter of uh, performing our burn, leaving leaving the little minty minmus. Uh, <laughs> call it mintmus. Um, God damn it, I'm terrible at things. Or like mint mousse, like a like a mousse dessert. Um, <laughs> well, all the scientific reports from the surface of minmus imply that we should probably not eat it. So uh, maybe we should just leave it. Uh, leave it and take our prisoners home. Very unprofessional Kerbals. Um, they always seem to just be more interesting, interested in eating things. I mean, they describe Gilly as a potato. Um, it's not a very... If my potato looked like that, I would be rather upset. Unless it was, in fact, that big, because then I'd be a rather 
rather successful landowner. That'd be quite nice. Um, but anyway, it appears... Oh yeah, I'm back at Kerbin now. It's in the dark. I can hardly tell. I can hardly, do, you know, differentiate between these jump cuts. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna burn a little bit north just to try and bring myself closer to the land so it's easier to come and pick up the, uh, pick up the, um, Kerbal. I'd also like to design this to land better on engines, on landing legs. But yeah, I will be doing that in the future. This was just kind of the prototype sort of thing, so it wasn't designed really with future use in mind. But anyway, uh, after getting on my path a little better, I thought I'd show you what happened when I tried to re-enter when I disabled SAS. It's actually, um only aerodynamically stable while pointing forwards so uh, yeah as I try to fight it I actually start to uh, start to lose control of it and it's actually aerodynamically stable pointing forwards not on the uh, on the heat shield which was rather worrying so I try and fight it as best as I can but it turns out I can't really so I'm uh, pretty much forced just to point into the airstream as you see here and uh, I lose nothing. The only thing I do lose is the one parachute I tried to pull early to try and slow myself down because I was very worried. But as it turns out, um, even re-entering at about 3 kilometers a second, or maybe a little less because I did slow down a bit with my engines, it was still fine. So um, I don't think this is quite as uh, maleficent as deadly re-entry. I think it's uh, still a lot of room for deadly re-entry, which is good. Although I guess I could turn it up if I wanted. I think they have included that, which is very nice, very... Very uh, nice that they, you can change those sort of things um, in KSP 1.0. But anyway, we touched down quite <laughs> with very little finesse. But uh, yeah, we've brought him back and we'll, um, you know, interrogate him through peaceful term, p peaceful means. And now we've got another launch, which uh, we're deciding to launch this because of some of the information uh, the perfidious Bob Kerman has turned over to us. It turns out their organization is just rather against the idea of a large... Uh, a large organization such as ourselves trying to colonize space. They see colonization as domina... Domin... D not dominization. Domination, yeah. God, oh God, I'm sorry, I completely forgot that word. But um, yeah, they... Um, so it appears that uh, they've uh, just been trying to fight us off a little bit, but uh, from what we've managed to get out of this Bill Kerman, he's uh, actually disclosed to us that he they've been in um, negotiations with... Uh, with some uh, various businessmen, such as uh, oil barons and various people who would like to mine f mine resources and uh, deep space, and they could uh, probably they'd probably be much more free if they have uh, rebels who are just interested in havoc and things on their side, as opposed to uh, as opposed to us having to defend them. Um, so yeah, it looks like they may be funded, get some funding for doing some defense work, and then probably use their profits to. Uh, further their evil, well, maybe not evil, but further their anti-Goliath corporation sort of, sort of, uh, uh, operations, which is not good because, uh, well, we just want to colonize space. They've kind of driven us to having to, you know, create these sort of vessels. But anyway, um, the transfer stage actually does burn out a little early, um, but that's fine. We're in orbit. I can push this up later when I bring another ship up. But yeah, this is the core of my station. This is called Battle Station 1 because we are uh, pretty committed to defending Kerbin, at least. Um, and this is the crew quarters. And you can see the uh, the pod is armoured from uh, pretty much all sides. Um, and there, I do have a lot of plans for this. Um, so uh, to make sure these plans are unimpeded, I've sent up one of my new heavier fighters, which is... Um, one of these winged crafts, which can fly, of course, but uh, that's mainly to cover up its um, missiles to defend it from attack from rebels and uh, possibly very well-funded rebels in the future if they uh, do start mining other planets and asteroids and such. But yeah, I have very big plans for this, and this will just go on the nose docking port for now until I put the hangers in. Yes, I'm going to have some small hangers for these. Uh, not large, not giant things like Hermes or Odin, but uh, I have got some armoured hangar ideas for these fighters. But yeah, until then, um, this has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.